But the facility is already buzzing with incoming and outgoing planes, all loaded with cargo. Every arrival and departure here must be carefully orchestrated. Hundreds of planes land and take off at two minute intervals. The entire compound has to be on constant alert. Such tight flight intervals make safety a constant challenge. One wrong move can mean catastrophe. Before any plane can land here, it must navigate the approach. We may have a string of airplanes that, that'll go out for 20 miles and they all line up behind each other like a conga line coming in. If you're feeding in from the different parts of the country, you've got airplanes landing from the west, airplanes coming in from the northeast and southeast. They're all feeding into Louisville at a critical time. But when air traffic is this congested, lost seconds are not an option. In recent years, flight operations felt they needed new technology to keep even better command and control over their cargo fleet. Climb and maintain 12000, turn right heading 280. It was clear regular radar was just not precise or fast enough. Radar being a ground-based technology from the 40s that continuously looks for aircraft and sends out messages saying, where are you, where are you, where are you, to which the aircraft can respond, here I am. After experimenting with plane tracking technology, flight operations found an answer. They now rely on one of the most technologically advanced surveillance systems in the world. It is called Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, or ADSB. ADSB's revolution comes down to strategic placement. Unlike radar station signals sent up from the ground, ADSB works on board the aircraft itself. It constantly transmits position, altitude and velocity directly from the plane to Worldport's air traffic control. Each airplane has its own signature <clears throat> on the screen. So I can see the ground speed of the airplane, the call sign of the airplane, the position it is in reference to my airplane. ADSB has a huge safety advantage. Other planes can pick up the same signals, avoiding close calls in the air or on the busy Whirlport runways. I've been flying since 1982 and I cannot understand how I was able to survive without ADSB all these years. It's an amazing system. Eleven thirty. Touchdown. All planes are on the Whirlport tarmac at last. A safe landing. But now a pilot faces another hurdle. He's got to park. With dozens of planes, hundreds of people, and scattered equipment on the ground, the pilot has just a few minutes to navigate the plane into the precise loading dock in the wings. It is a challenging test of safety and skill. Marshallers use lighted wands to guide the pilots to the correct docking bay. There's a constant shuffle of machines and a deafening roar of jet engines. Marshallers and pilots have to focus on each other to ensure everything works smoothly and safely. It is a process called ring walking. So you really got to pay close attention to the wings as you're walking it back. And it's kind of scary to have that kind of responsibility. The marshaller signals our incoming plane into a receiving area. Success. Another shift of planes lands and docks without a hitch. Now these same planes have to unload their cargo as our packages begin their journey towards Worldport's giant core. Worldport's exterior is essentially an airport terminal built on a mega scale. Three wings, A, B and C, branch off the runway. Together they can accommodate a total of 44 airplanes at any given time. With each new arrival, dock workers unload cargo onto a network of conveyor belts. The credo here, no room for error. 
and the stats are overwhelming. On a peak night, 9,000 workers have four hours to sort more than 800,000 packages, unloaded from roughly 100 modern jet liners. The whole process must work flawlessly. Even a minor delay can slow up the entire operation. Wellport works around the clock. But the bulk of the sort happens in two identical four-hour day and night shifts from 11 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and from 11 at night to 3 in the morning. Thanks to demand for overnight delivery, the high-volume heavy lifting is always at night. It's the handler's turn to take over. They've only minutes to unload these massive shipping containers from the aircraft. The job calls for some mechanical muscle. There's only one way for a crew to unload nearly 115,000 kilos of cargo in less than an hour. With a massive mega machine called the K-Loader. These towering five meter steel constructed scissor lifts can tackle five and a half tons of cargo at once. But for operators, wrestling K-Loaders isn't easy. It's very easy to drop a can. Very easy. You have to keep an eye out to make sure no one is on the elevator. You have to make sure that your cans are lined up because you don't want to get them stuck. You also want to look out for your crew because you don't want anybody smashed. The K-loaders load a container onto the dock. Crews need a way to move these cans into Wellport's wings as fast as possible without getting bogged down with more transport equipment. After trial and error, the company came up with a solution built right into the floor itself. Revolutionary ground cover called ball mat. Ball mats are custom floors lined with steel ball bearings and rubber coated wheels embedded into the surface. It's bolted into the ground with two bolts and it's just pivots and rolls real easy so anytime you move a container or anything over it, it slides with ease. It's a very nice system. The ingenious design gives a package handler almost superhero strength, enabling a single person to move containers weighing more than a ton. The next step, unpacking the cans. Ball mats help roll the cans into the heart of wing B. Here, workers lock the containers into one of more than 200 unloading stations inside the wings. To get every last package out of the cans, employees usually work in teams of two. The unloaders are responsible for sending every incoming item on its way into the Worldport distribution system. Workers must sort each item by hand, dividing packages into the three size categories, smalls, parcels and irregulars. It sounds simple, but with a mountain of boxes, each with unique instructions, it takes focus and stamina, and everyone here knows more containers are on the way. And when we're finished with the can, you push it off and grab another one. And we start the whole process over again. Each of the three size groups must head off into completely different conveyor universes, each designed to handle their unique dimensions and weight. Small packages are the easiest to handle. Workers unload them onto a conveyor belt in the wings and they're sent on their way. Parcels are a little trickier to handle. To keep track of these solo flyers, engineers needed a way to get a complete read on each parcel's vital statistics. They created a master machine, the DWS, that handles dimensioning, weighing and scanning 